Last week we talked about how money can play a role in getting happiness in your life. This week I'd like to focus on how you can do long-term financial planning so you can also get happiness and peace through that. And if you stick around to the end, then I'll tell you what is one crucial component to actually do proper financial planning and get peace of mind. So what is the point of money? The point of money is to actually make your most important goals in life come alive. Sure, you can accumulate money just for the sake of it, um, but that's not gonna bring you a lot of happiness and peace, believe me. So to do financial planning, first you need to understand what are your life goals. And you might ask me, so how do I sort out my life goals? Well, I've made a video about this that you can find in the description or here, and that basically will walk you through how to build life goals which are focused on your happiness and also where money is clearly visible. So how do I get clarity with my life goals, you might ask? Well, it's important that you actually link them to some key elements of how you can get happy in your life. And in the previous video, I've talked about the SPIRE system, which is to have spiritual well-being, physical well-being, intellectual well-being, relational well-being, and emotional well-being. If you want to do that exercise first, please go into this video that you can see in the description or here, and it will walk you through how to actually work on those SPIRE elements and actually build life goals based on this focus on happiness. Great. So now you have a clear view of your life goals and what role money plays into them. So to plan for your financial future, the first thing to believe in is that you're actually going to have some assets that you can invest in. And I'm very sorry to tell you, but it has to start with counting your money, knowing what you spend, and also having a budget that you actually respect. I know it doesn't sound much like fun, but I promise that it really only takes like 15 minutes a week to get there. And a budget should really be focused on what works for you in terms of happiness. It needs to be about your life goals, it needs to be about what's important for you. So if you want to know how to build that, I've also made a video about how to build a budget for happiness. You can find it in the description and up there. You're clear about your goals, now you count your money, you have a budget, you're saving money for investing. Now you need the framework to know how you are going to actually invest this money. That's also the way that you make investment personal, some things that you build according to who you are and what you want to see as part of your portfolio. It's essential because if it's built according to you, then you will feel empowered and you will feel in control of that investment plan. So what are the key parameters to consider for your investment principles? Are you short-term focused or long-term focused? Are you a daredevil or you want a solid cocoon around you? Do you want to invest with your guts or are you an analytic powerhouse? Do you mind complexity or do you want to keep things simple? What are the ethical aspects that you want to consider for your investments? Are there industries or companies that you're passionate and knowledgeable about? Let's give you an example. So if I take one of my core principle is to basically have enough interest revenue on my investment so I do not have to worry too much about earning a lot of salary or general compensation to actually pay for my annual cost. And that's based on what happened to me in the first part of my life. I saved a lot and now I'm trying to mostly live on my investments. So that's my overarching principle. As a result of that, one of my other sub-principles is the fact that I'm very long-term focused. I would say also that I am a mix of the daredevil, but also somebody who is risk adverse. So I like to make small risky bets, but at the same time with, with an important part of my investment that is actually secure. I'm more naturally an analytic person, like a quant, uh, but at the same time, I love actually doing something with my gut sometimes because I get some feeling, uh, so I'm a bit of both. And actually, I believe in, in some level of complexity in the number of assets that I own, but within each asset, I want to keep it simple. I don't want to have too many assets within the assets. So if you take, for instance, let's say crypto, uh, you could own 100 different digital assets within the cryptoverse, um, but I prefer to have like three, four, five max. From an ethical standpoint, basically, I don't want to have anything to do with something which is actively harming health or anything which has to do with weapons. And finally, I'm a tech geek, so I love technology and I love discovering new tech, so I want to have some money in, in some tech stuff, whether it's digital assets or it's you know new technologies, the future basically. So those are all my principles for investing. If my portfolio follows this, I'm much likelier to actually have peace of mind, to be happy with my portfolio and to say, this is me. This corresponds to what I want. And this framework builds on actually a great YouTuber, James at Invest Answers, who has worked on who are the best investor in the world and what is the type of profile that they have with some of the elements that I've given you. Let's make your investment portfolio match your principles now. That's a picture of how it looks like on my financial planning file. On top, you see my principle, as I explained them earlier. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on top, you have to be able to sustain the current lifestyle until the end of life with current assets. And what I also add is a status to actually get every month a feeling of whether I'm actually following this. Uh, so I look at the status every month. I revisit my overarching principles uh, every year. 
And then on this page, what you can see is the portfolio plan, which is based on those principles. So it starts with the different assets uh, that I have, different class of assets that you can see on the left. There can be more than that. Uh, for me, it's shares, bonds, property, and our REITs, uh, digital assets, precious metals, cash, and others. Uh, there is a system of target, which is based on uh, roughly what investment return that I want to get. So that's a separate thing, but I have a target in percentage of the total portfolio and I also have uh, a target in terms of uh, return on investment that I'm getting and where I am, the current level, okay, what is my current level of assets in each of those categories. What you can also see is that I have a strategy which is taking my principles and applying them in each of the asset class. So for instance, on shares, uh, it means that I want to have a long-term tracker for worldwide in index as a foundation, that's an ETF. Uh, I want to invest in a limited number of dividend growth companies, so the more aggressive part of the portfolio on shares and also I want to invest when it has reached a discounted price so it's really working on making sure that I don't uh, buy high and sell low and because I want to enter into uh, shares with discounted price I use a financial advisor to perform call and puts which is the best way of doing that so there you go in just one simple uh, table basically it helps me to understand how I am applying my principles to the different type of assets that I want to be invested in and it allows me to actually monitor the status also and decide where I'm going next and what actions I'm taking. Now let's talk about the fifth element. You've seen the movie. It's actually a great movie from the 1990s. It's called cool action sci-fi. That key element is where you set your expectations for your investment return. So for instance, if you decide that you're planning your financial life and you say, I need a 20% return every year on my investment to grow, um, you better look at the risk profile that you have. If you're, if you're very risk adverse, you're going to have a problem with this. If you love risk, you might be okay with that. And for reference, in the past 100 years, roughly, the US stock market has returned 8% per year with some wild variation up and down in a number of years. So one key point here is that the lower your expectations, the more you will get peace with your money because you will be able to meet those expectations. And the higher your lifestyle expectations are, the more this will put pressure on the return on investments that you will be expecting. So lower expectation in terms of lifestyle means lower expectation in terms of investment return means more peace of mind for yourself. I talk about this in uh, the video, which is about building a budget that works toward uh, happiness. So you can check it in the description or here will help you to actually have expectation on costs, which are first based on reality and second, trying to be as thrifty as possible. Fantastic. So you've managed to actually count, you've managed to budget, you've managed to save. Now you have some clear principles around your investment portfolio. So the next step is going to be actually building that investment portfolio for each of the principles that you've put forward. So what should I invest into, you're asking me? Well, that will be part of the next video where we will talk about the different type of assets that you can invest into. In the meantime, continue to work on your personal choices and I will see you in the field, special agents.